Um, so, it, so is it odd to give a sermon on uh, coincidences while we talk about coincidences? Maybe is that a coincidence? I don't know. <laughs> Um, starting to get the use of my finger going on here. Uh, so today's message, serendipity and a stray cat, which some might be thinking to yourselves, uh, what does a stray cat have to do with God's goodness? Others of you know me well enough to know I will eventually connect it back, God willing. And so I want to start by just, just letting folks know, you know, uh, years ago, uh, we welcomed a stray cat into our home. And it was probably, I don't know, a week before Christmas, and Morgan's going to remember this story well. And I think the guy, the, the cat, played upon our sympathies a little bit. Okay? And so we named him Leo, Leo the Lion. And from the time he appeared on our front porch that day to the time that we uh, drove to the, the pet store and purchased a cat box and a mouse toy, it was maybe 60 minutes. Okay? So all, he pushed all the right heartstring buttons. And, and he's no longer with us, unfortunately, but, but Leo was really our, our Christmas cat. And, but he was also ornery, okay? So he was an older cat, and the vet told us maybe nine, ten years old, and my wife would refer to him as a grandpa cat. Um, and he liked his naps. He did like his naps, during which time he made it clear that we were not to bother him, okay? And, and so kind of like me when I'm napping, but... Uh, and I might be just a little bit jealous, but he took a lot of naps. So uh, he also liked to snuggle when someone picked him up. And so he would actually perch on your shoulder like a canary or something if you let him or a parrot. And so, but I wondered about his previous life. Where did he come from? What kind of life did he lead prior to arriving at our doorstep? Would this be a good fit for our family? Only time would tell. I hoped it was because we had bought all of this <laughs> stuff for him. And so he would often uh, assume the Garfield posture on our front couch in our living room um, as he was taking like his third or fourth nap. And it was funny, we would take pictures. And you see, our family went through what we kind of privately called at the time a grief a thon. Because one cold weekend in October, we had lost our previous pet cat, who had also been astray. She had lung cancer. She was maybe 12 or 13 years old, no one knew for sure, and honestly the sweetest animal. We were, we were so grief struck. And so we had to make the decision whether or not to put her down in the vet's office, and, and we finally made the decision to do so. Two days later, we lost our dog. And she had been with my wife and I since we moved into our first apartment from when we were young whippersnappers, straight through until we moved into our current home. This was the second blow, kind of like when Mike Tyson fought Lennox Lewis the last time, if that years and years ago, if you're a boxing fan, um, it didn't go well for Mike Tyson. So this was kind of like one of those gut punches. And so we had to tell our kids that within two days, all the cuts were gone. And to make matters worse, this was sandwiched in between my wife's birthday where she had to kind of pretend to be happy. So you get the point. Maybe a week later, we received news that my wife's grandfather was in failing health at the hospice center, had days to live. His name was Harold. He was strong and direct and loved all his grandchildren immensely. Those days went by quickly, and he finally passed on. There was a funeral shortly thereafter, and he was laid to rest among an audience of those who truly loved him and grieved his absence. Like I said, it was in no small part a grief of thon. As our family moved forward, however, during the coming days, healing was at work. In fact, I'm not so much preaching here as I am just kind of venting, probably. And I often think of God when I think back to these events. You see, we were grief-stricken, but never dejected, never hopeless. There was still laughter and smiles and hugs in our household. God's joy and goodness still filled the center of our lives. Like I said a moment ago, ago for, the, for the kids, I love this one. Okay, Hebrews 13, 5. Never will I forsake you. Never will I leave you. Even when some seemingly bad coincidences are happening. This is no small promise. Do you believe this? In fact, the faithful who walk with God on a daily basis 
have experienced this joy firsthand. They have also lost cats and dogs and parents and family members, but they still have the joy of the Lord. Joy is something different and unique. It doesn't depend on temporal happiness or good fortune. As I preached about a couple weeks ago, you might remember that difference. It is based on a relationship with Jesus, something bigger and more transcendent than bad circumstances. And at times like this, I am grateful for serendipity, which is a big word for happy accidents. And it's funny how all these turns of chance seem to show up at just the right time. And it really makes me wonder, a lot of the time, if I'm seeing God, if there are accidents at all. So someone once told me that bad news happens in threes, okay? I don't know if you've ever heard of this. Um, so maybe the fourth occurrence is something fun then, something nice and positive and good. And the fact that Leo came to us during Christmas after an extremely difficult season in our lives could simply be an act of chance, and part of me is okay with that. He's just a cat, right? But the truth is, Leo needed us just as much as we needed him at that time. He was hungry, thirsty, cold, he had some health problems, and we took him in and we overwhelmed him with love, and he was still grumpy and he'd swipe at us and then we'd feed him again. Um, so he never knew what hit him, okay? So sometime after Christmas had passed and Santa had come and gone, I found an old picture on my cell phone, and I took a picture of a portrait that my daughter had painted um, in, in art class. Uh, I think it was a year prior, okay? So this was well before Leo the Lion Cat ever set foot in our house. And if I flip over, the right side is the portrait, and the left side is Leo. <laughs> So her painting was the spinning image of Leo, right down to the black and white markings. She even nailed his front teeth. And when I showed it to her, she remembered the art class, and I think you were just as stunned as I was. Serendipity, random chance, God's love and joy, you pick the term that you like best. But what had happened was one year before we knew Leo, she painted a picture of Leo. The symbolism here was hard to ignore. Is it just a cat? Even the details of the painting were accurate. Ultimately, this story doesn't prove anything about the reality of God working in our lives. I know that. I couldn't take this into a, a panel of skeptics and sell them on it. It is sufficient, however, to note that the arrival of Leo the Christmas cat coincided with the spirit of Christmas itself. You know how God is always doing that stuff with double layers of meaning, kind of forcing you to scratch your head? It's also sufficient to note that our new visitor just may have helped three children and two slightly heartbroken grown-ups at just the right time. Nonetheless, no matter which camp you fall into, chance or a gift, in our family, we know that God is good. Right place, right time, right result. Despite the losses we all experience as we travel down the road of life, often to destinations we would rather not go, in my heart I will always have the byproduct of faith, which is joy. I will have this gift, hopefully, no matter what circumstances occur and no matter what destination I arrive at. And my greatest hope for everyone I know and love is that they might have this type of joy also, this Leo the Lion joy. It defies cynicism. It covers over just about any negativity. You cannot argue with joy. Did you know that? Good luck trying to do that. You can't defeat it with negativity or cynicism. Joy through faith allows us to forgive people who may not have earned our forgiveness, who allows us to grieving people to be overcomers and survivors. And I think this is what God intended for mankind all along. We remember this awesome bit of scripture from Revelation. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Once again, do you believe this? I look forward to this day very much, not because I have earned it in any way, but simply because I know it's what God wants for me and all of those who love him. 
Now, I will accept serendipity as a down payment on that future hope of things to come. God desires us to have peace, and not just that, but also the type of faith and joy that come only from Him. And so we have this curious bit of scripture. This is from Proverbs 16.33. It says, The lot is cast into the lap, but its every decision is from the Lord. So if you don't quite know this yet, lots were like dice, okay? Um, ancient man used to depend on rolling the lots or rolling the dice to see what God thought of a given situation. This happens in the book of Jonah. This happens in 1 Samuel. Saul rolls dice to figure out what should go on um, when he's in trouble. Uh, it, it, God gives the Israelites two stones to use. So this has quite a biblical precedence. More so than we think today. It's, it's, you know, we think today about dice as someone going to the casino and, and testing their luck. Not quite the same thing. But at any rate, how much should we ascribe to chance? And how much to God? It raises some interesting questions. So I was fortunate enough to be able to do some speaking at Grandpa Harold's funeral all those years ago. It was a sad event, but his family was all together, and there was still laughing and camaraderie. And in planning his eulogy, I had neglected to mention on occasion that during family holidays, Harold asked for us all to bow our heads and say a few words about his wife who preceded him in death. And if I had the chance to say a few words to anyone listening here today, it would be these. We have all lost friends and relatives whom we love. It'll be okay. We will all lose someone we care about in the future. God is still there. And when it comes our own time to leave, ask him to take you and reconcile you to himself. He gave us Jesus as a gift, the serendipitous down payment, and it is okay to accept it. But it wasn't just a happy accident. No, it was much more than that. Do you believe it? God's love for the human being is something that has nothing to do with random chance, in fact, and everything to do with him wanting us as much as we need him. And in this regard, friends, I wish everyone their own stray cat experience. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, I pray for us today that we are able and willing to recognize divine coincidence and when it's from you. That when we roll the dice, God, you often still carve the path for us. I pray that you help us to see you in every happy accident and that we accept the grace and the joy that you've given us in the form of Jesus Christ.